This video is brought to you as a free public service courtesy of a three-year collaboration between Armory Center for the Arts and Pasadena Unified School District. Made possible by a grant from the U.S. Department of Education with additional support from the Clarence E. Heller Charitable Foundation. Artful Connections with Math has been formally evaluated by CREST, the National Center for Research on Evaluation, Standards, and Student Testing at the University of California, Los Angeles. For more Artful Connections with Math video lessons, or to learn more about professional development opportunities through Armory Center for the Arts, visit armoryarts.org slash math. Thank you. Welcome to Artful Connections with Math. Fraction Mobile. How can fractions and colors be understood as parts and wholes? This lesson's goal is for students to correlate fraction families with color families by mixing secondary colors and cutting paper circles and rectangles into fractional parts. Then, students will create a mobile that demonstrates how fractional parts combine to make a whole. Over the course of this lesson, your second grade students will be able to create halves, thirds, and fourths, blend secondary colors with oil pastels, and assemble a 3D mobile using fractional parts. This lesson addresses a number of common course standards for mathematics and visual arts content standards. Visit armoryarts.org fm1 to download a PDF of this entire lesson plan that outlines the standards addressed, plus key vocabulary words, rubrics, and ideas for accommodations, variations, and extensions not covered in this video. For this lesson, you'll need 11 by 18 drawing paper, oil pastels, cake rounds, deli lids, scissors, twisty wire, ebony pencils, hole punchers, acrylic paint, and construction paper. What is a fraction? Facilitate a class discussion where students talk about what they think fractions are. Are fractions numbers? Why do we need fractions? When do we use fractions in our lives? Chart all the responses. This will help you remember misconceptions students have about fractions. Explain that fractions are numbers that represent a part of a whole. For example, draw a rectangle on the board and tell your class that it represents a cake. Say that you want to share the cake with a friend at your house. How many pieces do I need? Why, you would need two pieces. Divide the cake unevenly at first. Ask your class, is the cake divided evenly? No, it is not, they will most likely protest. Then, divide the cake into two equal parts and explain that, in math, fractional parts are the same size. Now, give each child a piece of paper. Have your students hold the paper, portrait-oriented. Ask your class, how many sections or pieces does the paper have? Then, fold the paper in half, open it, and ask your students, how many sections does the paper have now? Point to each section and count. Ask your students to take out their art journals. Point to one page of their journal and ask, How much of the paper is this? Draw a picture of the paper on the overhead, dividing it into halves. Tell your students, here are two sections. Write the number two in the denominator of each section. The denominator tells us how many equal parts the fraction has. Now, point to one of the sections. Ask your class, how much of the paper is this piece? Label the drawing. The top part of the fraction is called the numerator. The numerator shows how many parts of the whole we are working with in the fraction. Point to the other section and ask your students, how much of the paper is this piece? Label the drawing one half plus one half equals two halves or one whole. Then. Tell your class that you were going to share your cake with one friend, but then two more friends came over to your house. Hold up the folded paper. Model how to fold it in half again. Ask your students how many pieces you have now. Open up the paper to reveal four equal pieces or parts. Remind your students that when we have two equal pieces, we have the number two in our denominator. Since we now have four equal pieces, what number should be in the denominator now? Have students draw and label the whole divided into one-fourth sections. For closing, 
Discuss with your students what they know about fractions. Are fractions numbers? What are the parts of fractions? How do we know what to put into the denominator? Before we begin, let's access prior knowledge with the students. Ask your students questions like, how do mathematicians and artists work in the same way? What do you know about paint? What do you think paint is made of? What do you know about different kinds of colors? Demonstrate how to properly use a brush, how much paint to put on the brush, how to make the paint more or less saturated, and how to wash the brush with each color change. Ask students to divide their cake rounds in thirds and then divide the thirds in half, creating six equal pieces. Have students write numbers one through six in each space. On the cake round, have students begin the color wheel by filling in the primary colors. Explain that when two primary colors are mixed together, they make a secondary color. For example, red and blue make violet. Have your students mix their secondary colors and finish their color wheel. If students are familiar with color theory, they can make a 12-segment color wheel using tertiary colors. See the lesson plan for step-by-step -step instructions. Just before this session ends, have a brief discussion with your students. Ask them, what did you learn about color? What were some of the challenges in mixing color? Which colors came out differently than what you expected? Now that we understand color theory and basic fractions, we're ready to move on to the next step. But first, let's review what we did last session. Ask your students, what do you know about fractions? What fractions do you notice on the color wheel? Give each student a piece of red, yellow, and blue construction paper. Use a deli lid to trace circles on them. Then, cut out all three circles. You can also give each child one piece of primary colored paper, ask them to trace out and cut three circles, then share with their neighbors so that everyone has one red, one blue, and one yellow circle. Ready? Fold the first circle in half and cut. Ask your students, how many halves make a whole? Write one half on the back of each half. Next, have your students create thirds by drawing a Y on the second circle. Remind them that fractions are equal parts. Demonstrate that the pieces should be as close to equal as possible, perhaps modeling what the Y drawing should look like. Have them cut out all the thirds. Ask your students how many thirds make a whole. Write one third on the back of each piece. Finally, fold the third circle in half and then in fourths. Cut out all the fourths. Ask your students, how many fourths make a whole? Write one fourth on the back of each piece. Now that we're finished with circles, let's move on to rectangles. Students will mix secondary colors using primary color oil pastels. Give each student a piece of cardstock. Divide cardstock into three even rectangles then cut them out. Now, create secondary colors by blending two primary color oil pastels directly onto each rectangle. Yellow and red makes orange, blue and yellow makes green, and red and blue makes purple. Students can build up several alternating layers of each primary color to get the desired effect. Finally, we're going to repeat the same division and labeling process as we did with the circles. Divide one rectangle into halves, divide one into thirds, and one into fourths. Let's review what everyone's learned. What did you learn about blending oil pastels to create secondary colors? How are fractions in a circle the same as fractions in a rectangle? Then, have students put their fractional pieces in order from greatest to least. That would be one half, one third, and one fourth. Have students notice that the fractional parts decrease in size as the denominator gets greater. Now it's time to create the mobile, but first let's access prior knowledge. Ask your class, what do you know about sculpture? And what is a mobile? Show and tell students about the life and art of American sculptor Alexander Calder. 
Visit armoryarts.org FM1 to download a PDF version of this entire lesson plan, which contains biographical information about Calder and images of his artwork. Ask your students the following questions. What do you see? What shapes can you identify? What parts of a whole do you see? Make sure students understand that these parts are not fractions because they are not cut into equal pieces. What do you notice about how the artist uses color? What do you notice about how the shapes are arranged? What was the first step the artist took when creating this work? What ideas or experiences is the artist Alexander Calder trying to communicate? What part of this sculpture gives you an idea for making your own work? Okay, let's make a mobile. First, use a hole puncher to make clean holes in each fraction piece and in the center of each segment on the color wheel. Using a total of six different colored pieces of twisty wire, assemble a mobile by threading one piece of twisty wire through all of the rectangular fractional pieces with the same denominator. Do the same for the circle pieces. Finally, poke the twisty wire through the corresponding hole in the color wheel that matches the fraction shape's color and hang. Is everybody finished? Good. Ask your students questions like, what do you see? What parts of a whole do you see? What do you notice about how your fellow students place their fractional parts? What experiences do you think this artist wanted to share? What ideas is this artist trying to communicate? After the mobiles are complete, have your students draw a picture of three different examples of a shape that is divided into equal fractional parts. Have them label the picture, then have students explain their drawings to each other, pointing out the equal parts of each fraction. Thanks for joining us today. To download a PDF of this complete lesson plan, visit armoryarts.org FM1. To make more artful connections with math, visit armoryarts.org math. Thank you.